In today's tutorial, we are doodling all the herbs of summer and we're going to make this cute grid illustration for your sketchbook. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and today I'm starting with a watercolor sketchbook. Um, it has nice thick toothy paper, great for drawing and doodling on. And then of course you can add paint to your illustration if you want to. I have a pencil and eraser and then I'm using my Pigma Micron, the 08 nib, so a larger nib for these cutesy doodles. And uh, I'll link all that stuff in the description. Wanted to show you some of the herb illustrations that I've done in the past. This is from the uh, June plan with me last year. It's a grid illustration illustration. This one is uh, newer. The same, a grid illustration. This one has four, the other one has nine. And laying down a grid is exactly what we're going to do today. And uh, it's a wonderful way to sort of plan out an illustration. You don't have to start on graph paper or scrap paper. It gives you a plan. So we're going to jump right in and I am going to start by illustrating uh, rosemary. Uh, rosemary is really fun and easy. So it's a good starting point where you're going to do a few stems. And I'm gonna go in pen just so you can really see what I'm doing, but of course you can do everything in pencil. So once you have the stems laid down, you're just gonna do these pairs of oval leaves all the way down the length of the stem, and some can be larger, and uh, you can kind of you know, stop with them as they all meet down at the bottom, and you can do as many little branches or stems of sprigs of rosemary, we'll call it as you like. Um, so really simple and fun to illustrate. Next, we're going to do basil. So start with one stem, two little leaves at the top, and then it sort of has these bunches of leaves, and the leaves are quite rounded. They come to a bit of a slight point, and I'm trying to do mine going off in all directions, uh, but you don't have to do that. You can just do two leaves on each side of the stem if you're more comfortable. And then the leaves have, I'm gonna go in pen again so you can see, just a little bit of, uh, that toothy shape around the edges, and then they have some veining, but very, very widely spaced uh, veins or lines. And you can see I'm just doing it very perfectly and perfect. I don't need to capture every last detail, especially on some of the smaller leaves or the leaves on the bottom that are sort of twisting away from the viewer, we'll call it. So I'm just having fun with it. Um, and that is my basil. Okay, next we're going to do lavender. So lavender is a lot like rosemary. We'll start with two stems or one stem. And then we're going to do the lavender seeds or blossoms right over the top of the stem. So this is a good one to do in pencil. So one, two, three little blossoms. Start with the one in the middle. Here, we'll get really close. So one over the stem, two, three, and you can kind of see what I'm doing there. We'll go over it in pen again, one over the stem, and then two poking out from beside, and you barely see the, uh, the actual stem because of all those little lavender flowers that are growing right over top of it. So this one's a good one to plan out, but it is very simple to illustrate. And you can also do it by just doing these heart shapes along the length of the stem. Um, but that can sometimes look a little bit like wheat or something, I think. But maybe for the ones beside the main ones, you can just do some little heart shapes. Okay, next we are doing sage. And sage is another easy one. Sage has these big floppy leaves. They are long and oval shaped and they come to a slight point and they have a sort of one one line down the center or you can place that line kind of wherever you think it might fall and I'm just trying to make a nice design making some of them smaller and some larger just for the sake of interest. Okay we're just racing through but I'm going to show you a whole bunch so the next one is thyme. So thyme starts with one stem and then all these little stems coming off of that main stem and they're sort of curving and we do these pairs of leaves and each pair goes in a pair. Does that make sense? I'm going to go over it in pen. So one pair, two pairs and, the, and then you give a little space. So there's four leaves basically clustered together and put a little space in between. And I just think that helps it to look like time because it has all these little bunchy groupings of leaves. And you can do as many stems as you like. You can see I left one till the end because I didn't know if it was gonna look good. And then I decided, yes, it will look good. <laughs> um, and we'll label that one as well. Next, we are doing oregano. Oregano is a lot like basil. Start with a stem or two. 
and it has these rounded leaves that come to a slight point, maybe a little more round than the basil and a little more um, equally uh, sized. So they don't get quite as small at the top and quite as large at the bottom. Uh, and you can see me doing that here. They're all fairly the same size, a little smaller on top. And then just for the sake of doing something fun and different, I'm going to put oregano flowers. Most of these uh, herbs will flower at some point. If you grow herbs in your garden, uh, you know that. But just choosing one or two to add the flower to is a nice way to add some visual interest, to add some difference. So because the oregano looks similar to basil and mint, actually, we're going to do the little uh, oregano flowers and those will look quite cute and they're just I'm doing like really simple little flower shapes you know four petals a dot in the middle and I think at this point you can really see how the grid is working for me um, because all the herbs are evenly spaced and then I write the name of the herb along those, those lines that I set out at the beginning. Now mint is similar again to basil and oregano so we're going to do a top down view. Start with three little leaves and then place three more and those are just your plan, that your map. And then you're going to go along those uh, edges and add this toothy area, this jagged edge, because the mint leaves are quite shaggy. So just lay down your sort of map of three leaves and then three more, and then you can go in and give each leaf its shape. And I do the large ones first because they're a little simpler, and then I'll do the small ones. And as I go over it in pen, you can really see I'm adding all these jagged uh, edges and then lots of tiny tight veining. So whereas the basil just had two or three lines, the mint is um, a little more detailed and that is it there. So it's just about thinking, how can I present something a little bit differently? Because the oregano and basil and mint are all gonna look the same. Uh, chives are our next one and they are so simple. They're basically just lines. And then I'll do a chive flower on one, which is just this tight cluster of little ovals. Um, the chive flower, of course, is like this sunburst of purple and they're so, so cool. So that one really, really, easy to illustrate and then finally our last one that we're going to do and you can see how the grid looks really cute at this point we are going to do cilantro or you could probably call this parsley too flat leaf parsley and I'm just gonna start with a curved stem or two or three and then I'm doing these shaggy leaves um, so really simple and fun to illustrate and just going in with pencil first make sure I like the placement of everything and the look of it and then I will um, go over these shaggy funny shaped leaves in pen so that's it there I just want to fill in this last square I'll label that one that we'll call that cilantro and uh, yeah that's it that's my grid illustration of all my favorite summertime herbs it seems like the perfect time of year to be illustrating herbs doesn't it we'll of course erase all of those pencil lines leaving us with a nice symmetrical evenly spaced doodle doesn't need to be perfect to look pretty symmetrical or even to your viewer. And then once all those pencil lines are erased, you can decide where you might need a little more shading. And you can see I added uh, shading to the oregano and the chives, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed learning to draw all these summer herbs. They make great doodles for your bullet journal. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications for more videos like this one, and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.